Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of our crucified and risen Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. What challenging times the Hebrew people were living through. They were a month and a half into their 40-year journey. Freed from slavery, they were now fleeing from the rich land of Goshen and headed for the promised land but they were going through some of the most barren, dry, desolate land that you can imagine. So they were thirsty for water, and God gave them water, sweet water from bitter water. But that was yesterday's need. Today, they're hungry. So hungry that they seem to have forgotten what a life they had under slavery in Egypt. The cries of their stomachs made them forget the terrible life in slavery and made them forget what God has already done for them. But God sends them food. What is it from heaven that will be their breakfast for the next 40 years? Now, they didn't have a map to take that short 250-mile trip to the Promised Land. But in their challenging times, they had a GPS, a God protection system, to protect them on their journey. Water, so they would never be thirsty. Manna and quails from heaven, so that they would never be hungry. Signs of God's love for them. Like the Hebrew people, we are living in some pretty challenging times. As we journey, to the kingdom on earth. We look at our world today and wonder, what is it? What's going on? So many things in life just don't seem right. So we wonder, God, where are you in the midst of all this injustice, this chaos of division and hatred? Are you really with us, God? Please, show us a sign. Show us your God protection system. Give us the miracle of justice so we can put the world to rights. Well, dear friends, like manna from heaven, God's protection system is working miracles in our world every single day. Miracles of the hungry being fed, the poor cared for, the oppressed and marginalized set free. And it's happening not because of saying, what is it? Rather, it's happening because you are saying, here we are, God. We will be the heart and hands of your kingdom signs today. It's happening because each of you are the miracles of the kingdom that is unfolding before us. So what is it? What is it is Christians like each of you making a difference in our world today, setting the world to rights one act of kindness at a time, ending hunger one full bowl at a time. So how do I know this? Well, I confess I have insider information. You see, I read this week your mission site profile for the call of a new pastor. And believe me, now after reading that, I really know what it is. It's each and every one of you living out your faith in response to God's love. Thanks be to God for all that you are doing to bring about the kingdom in our world today. So now, that was my kind of opening because I truly was impressed in reading the mission site profile of all that this church is doing. But let's go back in time. The sixth chapter of John's Gospel always fills the month of August in this lectionary cycle. And before August is over, you will have heard more bread stories than would ever fill a bakery. Last week, we heard John's account of the feeding of the 5,000. We heard lots of reasons why we can't, but we only heard one reason why we can, because there is only one reason why we can, and that reason is that through God in Jesus Christ, all things are possible. So in the text today, 
the crowd wonders if Jesus can work a miracle and, and give 5,000 people something to eat. He fed 5,000 with bread and fish yesterday. Why can't he do it again today? The crowd seems to have turned into a crowd with a major case of the munchies. 5,000 serious snackers who just want more and more and more. Like that couch potato searching for the lost bag of potato chips. They want to be filled, not fulfilled. Their desire is to have their stomachs satisfied, their needs met. They want to maintain that munchy status quo. So the people follow Jesus like groupies, clamoring after him, shouting for him, for give them, give them more and more bread. So I want to ask, were they Jesus groupies or were they stomach groupies? Following him not because of reasons of the spirit, but rather following him because of reasons of the stomach. But there's a problem with stomach groupies. They want the Messiah for all the wrong reasons. So Jesus tells them, don't follow me because of the food that perishes, but follow me because of the food that endures for eternal life, the one true bread of life, Jesus. In a nutshell, or in a whole loaf of bread, what Jesus says captures the reason that Jesus is maybe a little reluctant to perform these miracles. Any loaves he multiplies are going to be eaten and the people are going to be hungry tomorrow. Any water he turns to wine is going to be consumed and the wedding guests will want more. Any paralytic that he cures is going to grow old and become crippled again. Any child he raises from the dead is going to grow old and die again. Miracles may make a big impression but when they're over, they don't last forever. Without true belief in Jesus, the miracles are just, just a tasty snack. Without true faith in Christ, the miracles are simply a story. Yesterday's miracle of feeding the 5,000 becomes today's, what sign are you going to give me to believe in you at least until tomorrow? Jesus wants us to feast on something else, something more powerful than miracles, something that will last beyond today's miracle and tomorrow's miracle. He wants us to feast on the true bread of life, Jesus. What he calls us to do is not easy because to take in what Jesus offers us is to turn away from that which perishes, that which the world offers, and turn towards that which endures, the love and grace of Jesus Christ. To believe not just in his miracles, but to believe in him, God on earth. That is the work of God, to believe in Jesus. God's sole purpose in salvation it is not that we just believe in miracles. It is that we believe in Jesus Christ. That sounds simple, but sometimes it's not. You see, the problem that will unfold in John's sixth chapter is that believing in Jesus, the true bread of life, can be a pretty difficult thing to swallow. Pardon the pun. Wouldn't it be easier wouldn't it be easier to believe in Jesus if instead of him saying, love your enemies, he said, love your friends? Wouldn't it be easier to believe in Jesus if instead of him saying, feed the hungry, he said, hey, sit still, don't worry, I'll do it for you? Wouldn't it be easier to follow Jesus if instead of him saying, pray for those who abuse you, he said, pray for those who help you? You see, from a human perspective, it is far more tempting to snack on the morsels of sin in front of us than it is to feast on the one true bread of life, Jesus Christ. From the world's perspective, I think I'll taste a little revenge often sounds better than turn the other cheek. From the world's perspective, building walls that separate is easier 
than loving our neighbor. Luther called this incurvatus core, incurvatus core, turning in on our, our hearts, turning in on ourselves and turning away from God. We shouldn't be surprised by this. After all, turning away seems easier. It's easier to believe in than to feast on the true bread of life. In John 6, John, uh, Jesus invites us to refocus our lives, recenter our lives, turning away from that which turns us from God towards feasting on the true bread of life that turns us to God. He invites us in this chapter to believe in him, to trust in him, to fulfill us, not just fill us, but fulfill us and our lives with his grace and his truth. To be witnesses with our heart, mind, and senses as we breathe in the aroma of Christ. To feast on the bread of life, given for each of us and for countless millions who will gather at tables around the world to be fed by the bread of life today. Dear friends, at this table of grace today, you will touch the goodness of God's grace and hold it gently in your hand. And you will know that whoever comes to Jesus will never be hungry for true life. And whoever believes in him will never thirst for grace and forgiveness. For you will feast on the true bread of life and cup of salvation that is God's unconditional love and grace given for each of you. And when you do, you will truly believe and truly know that through Jesus Christ in all things, God is good. Good morning. My name's Dan and I'm going to be your server today. I invite you to try our house specialty. It's called the bread of life. And try it with the cup of salvation. Because when you do, you will believe and you will truly know that this is the real meal deal. So come. Come today. Come and receive God's gift of grace given for you. And know the truth of God's love for you always. Thanks be to God. Amen.